G'day there, how's it going? Today, I'm gonna to explain the difference between a managed and unmanaged battery. So let's go and have a look at the specifications of this battery in a bit more detail. Um, I'll also be talking more about managed and unmanaged batteries. So let's go and check it out. So what I'm sitting in front of here uh, on the cold concrete floor is the Discover AES system, or the AES battery. Uh, this is a lithium ferrophosphate battery that has uh, this particular model, 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours or 130 amp hour capacity at 48 volts. <clears throat> What's special about this? Well, I mean, first thing when you pick it up, it's very, very solid. It's built out of heavy gauge steel. Uh, extremely robust design. Uh, terminals on the top, positive and negative can be used just like a regular lead acid battery. That means you can connect it to any inverter that functions with 48 volt lead acid systems. These batteries have very high uh, maximum and continuous charge currents. So you can um, discharge these continuously at 130 amps, but you can peak them at up to 300 amps for three seconds. So that means that they can absorb some of those inrush uh, currents that are required for particularly off-grid applications. This battery comes in, uh, well, it's one model, but it has two different modes of operation. One of those is self-managed. In self-managed mode, it's basically a lead acid equivalent. It's a 48 volt, 6.6 .6 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, the difference, I suppose, with lead acid is that it's fully usable, not just half its capacity. Um, but it also has the ability to be run in what's called managed mode. So you'll notice there's some COM ports on the top here. With these ports connecting uh, via daisy chain, you can have um, multiple batteries functioning as one. And one of the COM ports will go off to the charging source, typically an inverter. When it's in managed battery mode, it can communicate its state of health, its state of charge, its internal temperatures, etc., to the charging source. This means it can be run very, very um, close to its limits safely because it's in charge. It tells the uh, charging source um, how it should be operated. In fact, when I first plugged this into a Schneider XW, I was amazed it just pr programmed the Schneider automatically for this battery. I didn't have to put any settings in. So you could say it's also idiot proof as well. Now, what I want to look at today is uh, what is a managed battery and what is an unmanaged battery? And I'll compare the pros and cons of both of these. What's uh, surprising is that uh, historically all batteries were unmanaged, as in that they were basically just a source of voltage and current. And so the batteries, typically lead acid, would have uh, two terminals, plus and minus. You would connect a charging source and or an inverter to it and set the parameters to suit the battery type. That historically was the only way of managing a battery, which was what we now call unmanaged. We manage it by voltage and current settings. But now the term is being applied to batteries which have a communication port. Typically lithium ion phosphate and others have communication capability so that more information can be uh, shared from the battery's management system back to the charging source, typically an inverter or um, maximum power point tracking charge controller. So let's look at some of the pros and cons. <coughs> Managed battery, what is the pros of having a comms management system? A communication system that allows the battery to talk to the charging source and vice versa. Well, one of the advantages, particularly with lithium ion phosphate batteries, uh, is faster charging. Typically you'll get more than 25% faster charging with a managed uh, battery because of the ability to adjust the charging profile to suit the characteristics. Because the, the battery management system built into the battery unit itself is constantly measuring temperature and voltage of the cells, it allows you to kind of push the edge a bit more in terms of rate of charge compared to having no um, communication. So what is this, um, this communication consist of? Well, commonly called state of health. It's a range of characteristics. Things like what is the state of charge of the battery? I mean, a battery state of charge is often inferred by simple amp hour counting which is not very accurate. Whereas a battery management system that has close integration with the battery or the cells that it's managing knows much more about the state of charge. Uh, it also can report on the status of the battery itself. The battery module, for instance, might be off. 
it might be faulty, it might be charging or discharging. All of these, this information can be reported through that comms interface. Also, some BMSs, battery management systems, will store historical data um, and you'll be able to retrieve that through the, the comm system. Even remote diagnosis of that system as well. And this is quite a special feature of some battery management systems uh, built into a battery is that they can push their configuration to the charging source. Now this is something which we'll be focusing on particularly with the Discover AES battery, which I'm going to introduce you to today, um, its ability to push its configuration through uh, the Zambus network to a Schneider system. Uh, pretty amazing feature, really. So uh, what are the, some of the cons of a managed battery? Well, one of the cons typically of a pure managed battery, and when I say pure, it will only work in management mode with a comm system, is that if it loses that communication with the inverter or charging source, uh, it just may shut down and therefore you've got no power. And that can be as simple as the cable gets disconnected, the comms cable. Or it could be that the battery itself is over discharged, has gone into deep sleep, has turned off the inverter, uh, and even if another AC source comes along, like the gridder or generator, that battery now is in deep sleep and is not woken up by the inverter. Now that can be a problem with a, a comms system that um, is critical to the operation of a managed battery. But there are some managed batteries which are also self-managed. Now what I mean there is that in lieu of that communication system, they can continue to function. They can function as it were an unmanaged battery because internally they look after their safety in terms of overcurrent, over voltage, uh, under voltage, over temperature, all of that is being managed internally without any communication to an external source. So some so-called unmanaged batteries have ability to self-manage themselves. Now that's one of the features that I rather like about the uh, Discover AES battery is its ability to work in both modes. You can effectively use it as a lead acid replacement. So coming on to unmanaged batteries uh, in terms of their pros, one of the pros of an unmanaged battery is often it can be used as a direct replacement for lead acid. For instance if you've got an inverter or a charge controller that's been designed historically for lead acid batteries might be a 24 volt or 48 volt inverter for instance uh, if it worked with lead acid batteries you could use an unmanaged lithium ferrophosphate battery for instance or similar uh, in unmanaged mode uh, quite safely and that's because you can just set the charging characteristics maximum charge current uh, the maximum minimum voltages of the battery in the inverter itself and operate it as it were a de facto lead acid battery. Another advantage of unmanaged batteries uh, is that they're very simple to install. There's no integration with the inverter itself. You don't have to check um, will this battery work with this inverter. It can be used as a generic device uh, for storing charge. So what are the cons of a uh, unmanaged battery. Well one of the cons is that there is no charging profile um, being reported so it can take a bit longer to ch recharge a unmanaged battery. Um, depends on the, 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 the type but for instance I know with the Discover AES battery they quote around about 25% slower recharge uh, in unmanaged mode uh, but still it will do the job so it still will fully recharge it just will take a little bit longer. You're not getting um, accurate state of charge measurements either so you might think you've still got 30% left in your battery and then suddenly it shuts down on low battery voltage because the accuracy of the state of charge is, is poor when you're just doing coulomb counting, counting amp hours in and amp hours out. Also there's no um, reporting of cell temperatures or cell voltages. So focusing on the, um, the Discover AES battery a bit, the one I've got here at the Smart Energy Lab uh, supplied to me uh, by Discover is their 48 volt unit. It's, it's technically known as the 42-48-6650, which means it's a 6.6 .6 kilowatt hour 48 volt battery. Now, 48 volt battery is a kind of misnomer. These days with lithium ion batteries, they come in different voltages depending on the cell type. Are they lithium ferrophosphate cells? Are they um, lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt or other and therefore how many of those cells are in a series will give you a nominal voltage. So in the case of the Discover AES battery that we're testing here at the Smart Energy Lab its uh, nominal voltage is 51.2 volts which will work with basically any 48 volt inverter that's uh, right in the middle of their operating range. It has a maximum operating voltage of, uh, voltage of 58.4 uh, and a massive 130 amp continuous current discharge. It can even peak at 300 amps for three seconds. 
Now, why is that important? Well, if you're using a, uh, a, a lithium-ion phosphate battery, for instance, on-grid for self-use of solar, uh, that peaking isn't a big issue. But if you, because you've got a, the grid to provide you with any excess demand that the battery might not be able to deliver, uh, you can just rely on that. But in the case of a off-grid system, you'll get large surges of loads um, coming and going, particularly motors and pumps. And uh, that will cause a large instantaneous draw of current from the battery. So to have that surge capacity really protects against sudden shutdown. The other great advantage of uh, some unmanaged batteries is the ability to parallel them. Now in the case of the Discover AES, you can parallel many, many. I'm not even sure what the limit is, basically on the DC bus. Um, they can be connected through an interlinking um, synchronization cable and act like one big battery bank, and both in managed and unmanaged mode. They've got a really wide operating temperature range in terms of charge uh, from freezing to 45 degrees Celsius and from discharge minus 20 to positive 50 degrees Celsius. Now that's, that's a pretty healthy range for applications uh, in Australia, for instance, where we have quite high temp ambient temperatures, particularly uh, in central uh, parts of Australia. Another thing that AES have got, or the Discover AES battery has got, is integration, very close integration, currently with the Schneider XW1, uh, XW Plus, sorry, um, inverter via Zanbus, the communication system that Schneider use. Uh, it means that when you plug the comms cable between the Discover battery and the Schneider system, straight away it pushes the configuration through to the Schneider charging sources. Uh, it's pretty amazing. I didn't realize it did this and I was trying to reprogram uh, the charge controller um, and I just couldn't change the settings. It just wouldn't let me and I was kind of bemused by this, contacted Discover and asked them about this and they just explained, well, let's push the settings through, they're the correct settings and you can't change them because it wouldn't be safe. So it's got inherent safety, the fact that it pushes those settings straight through. Now I know that uh, Discover have developed another product called the Lynx. Now the idea with the Lynx is it allows more than just, uh, for instance, Zanbus communication, it allows communication with a wide range of inverters. Now it's a little box basically. Um, a comms interface. Uh, currently it uh, supports uh, SMA inverters, Victron, Outback and others to come. So just in summary, uh, paralleling multiple battery modules is an advantage with this system. So if you, each unit 6.6 kilowatt hours you can build up capacity with multiple batteries in parallel. Uh, you can also get more power as well so uh, for every uh, battery you add you're getting another 130 amps of continuous power. Inbuilt is uh, electrical safety, so it's got its own mechanical isolation, so there is a disconnect uh, when that battery needs to disconnect for fault conditions uh, or when you turn it off, so you don't have live terminals. And also, the whole battery is being approved to UN 38.3. Now, I had to look this up because uh, UN numbers float around, but this one is the transport of dangerous goods requirements, and uh, it's a very important uh, a safety feature of a battery. If it's going to be shipped anywhere, that it can be shipped safely. Now, to meet UN 38.3 is not trivial, and so there's some pretty arduous tests that a battery has to undergo to pass that. And that's one of the things that the Discover AES battery has achieved, UN 38.3 safety. So if you want to find out more about Discover, uh, check out the links below. And if you like this video, click the like button. You know what to do. And if you want to be informed of new videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon so you know I've uploaded some new content. If you'd like more videos on related subjects, please add them to the comments below and I'll see what I can do. And lastly, if you want to actually do a training course on solar and storage, I run one every month uh, here at the Smart Energy Lab in Melbourne, Australia. So check the links below for enrolment details. See ya.